though, probably will have trouble blinking from Chuan. Ravage on three, Shackle on two. Why a beautiful little Shackle from him, and that sets up a quick double kill. Because the question demon starts it off with the Firefly blinks in, grabs K Phoenix, surprise! Does get chucked up before he BKBs. FC, FC, overextending. Here comes the AoE, but he's already gone down N9 in a world. Will this be enough to free Long DD down? He's so low. Maybe should have saved the flame rift. Don't know if that last auto attack would have hit. And Tiny kills him with the splash on kill. And we'll get out. They haven't got sentries or dust. The clan comes in. Maybe an ancient. Oh! Well played. Oh, this is a beautiful thing to see. It's a base trade, and EG might be caught unaware. It's a time for a TP scroll check, and nobody has a TP on EG! <laughs> they haven't done enough damage to back their protection! They need it! <laughs> Unbelievable! For geniuses! Thousands of years of waiting. And yet no time to waste. Welcome back, everybody, into game number one of Tong Fu versus EG, our first elimination game of these playoffs. And, guys, let's do a little bit of speed draft. I'm LD, of course. It's Rubik, Templar Assassin, Panda, Night Stalker, and the Tidehunter all banned out by Tong Fu. A lot of tanky initiators. They're going to pick up Queen of Pain, Jakiro, and Enigma on the side of EG. We have a Bounty Hunter, Dark Seer, Chaos Knight, Naga Siren, Keeper of the Light, Bands, and the Picks. Well, it's the Bat Rider bomb coming your way with a bit of a twist with two strong supports. The Bat Rider, the Venomancer, the Life Stealer, and the Lashrak all picked up by EG. And they have HYHY standing in for them. He is Munchkin. B Diz is not going to be here today. Well, as far as standards go, they've got one who can play very well in an Asian server and one who can who just play very damn well in general. Be interesting to see if he's going to play that support role for BDS. HYHY more known for his solo play, but EG, they've gone for the two really strong aggressive support heroes. Not opting for Malx Chen here, but the next bomb is just going to be their way of looking to get lots of kills and sort of really dominate that mid game stage here. Yeah, and interestingly, Tang Fu has gone for the Shadow Fee. Now, we've seen some Chinese teams use this hero incredibly effectively. It is a very skill-dependent hero, and you need to have that good start. How do you feel about the Shadow Fiend picked in this game? He's got some good backup with the Jakiro and to a lesser extent the Enigma once he hits level 6. But they have some heroes that can really lock down a Shadow Fiend and punish him. Batrider's Sticky Napalm, very annoying to deal with as Shadow Fiend, especially when trying to land those raises. And if Lifestealer gets close to you, generally you're a pretty sad Shadow Fiend. And also quite likely to be offensive trialing if EG want to do that. The Venomancer, Less Track, Lifestealer. Lifestealer is great for the offensive trance. He can set things up, make sure the Gale lanes are guaranteed a Lesher Axe with Earth to land with the Neg Slow on top of the Venomancer. And that's really scary for Shadowfin. He can get dived at the tower if he's playing that safe lane, which it looks like he will be. So, EG, they're going to say, let's go offensive trialing with this. You've got two really solid solos in the Batrider and the Nature's Prophet, not to mention the Nature's Prophet. Something that Geo played a lot of in the solo mid lane back at TI2 with Complexity. Maybe that's something EG want to do here. A great ganker can just add to that killing power in that offensive trial lane, and then also uh, you've got the pushing power. You get a kill, then you go onto those towers. So I really like what EG have done with these aggressive picks. And, and even this Prophet, is just the, it's, just, it's the perfect hero to help set up those ganks. Now you have Batrider, if he gets the early blink. Lifestealer can infest into Prophet, who can TP all around the map. We saw EG use that previously, and can also infest into the Batrider. So either way, however they choose to combo these heroes up, lots of early and mid-game ganky potential. Some great team fight from Tongfu, but it comes down to are they going to be able to actually set it up? Will they find the openings to execute that team fight. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they do this. And EG, they're actually going to have HYHY by the looks of things, playing that Nature's Prophet. Fear on Leshrac, so a possible jungle Nature's Prophet with a solo mid Leshrac, or maybe Fierce is going to be playing that support role with HYHY on a solo. It'd be really interesting to see how EG want to play this. They know Tong Fu quite likely going to be looking to, to play a bit greedy with that Enigma jungle, so EG can afford to do something similar with a greedy Nature's Prophet jungle of their own. 
Yeah, let's see. Let's see how they end up laning it. It's normally Demon who plays the off lane Bat Rider, but we have seen him at times just sort of abandon that lane early on. Maybe the, the Prophet stacks some jungle camps and, and Bat Rider starts in the off lane and then comes to farm them. There's so many ways you can combine these heroes as far as laning goes to maximize your farm, and I'm curious to see which sort of brand EG choose to go with this game. Tang Fu, not really the best at keeping something like a Prophet out of lane. Jakiro. He's a decent support to do it, but you can generally TP away from him. So maybe they'll actually just have the Prophet try and get some experience, throw the Batrider in the jungle. However they want to do it, though, they have their options. Long DD on the Enigma. Mu playing the Queen of Pain. How on the Shadow Feed? How Shadow Feed something I have not seen before? Can he live up to the legacy of some of the other Chinese players who've come before him? We'll see soon. Veronica on the Beastmaster. And last but not least, it is Sang Chen with some Sentry Wards already picked up. Worried about that camp boarding. He's playing the Twin Headed Dragon. Well, over on the Evil Genius' side at bottom lane, currently Demon. He's going to be playing the safe lane solo Batrider. We've got the tr what looks to be the trial, and with J playing the Life Stealer, Fear on Lashrak, Axie playing the support role, and Malk playing the Venomancer. So it is going to be HYHY playing as a solo, looks to be heading towards that middle lane. And I, I like what EG have done. I think this is the best thing they can do with their lanes. It's the most uh, effective early game laning for them. The one smart thing that Tongfu are doing is they're sending Shadowfin mid. Shadowfin would not stand a chance against that aggressive trial, and so they're going to match him up against Nature's Prophet at mid. Yeah, this is definitely going to work well. We're going to see Shadowfin getting some farm, and Prophet really can't shut his farm down at all. Without the smoke ganks, without the roaming. Now, will there be any? There's no smoke off the bat on the Venomancer. They don't really have a trial lane where you can afford to leave a hero alone. So, EG want to punish that early jungle lane enigma, they want to punish the safe lane, maybe we'll see some quick tower dives, maybe we'll just see them really shut these heroes down. This is going to be a little tricky for enigma, but without smoke and with some good vision, he'll be okay. For the moment though, they are playing in the dark on this top side of the map, and that has to be, that has to be priority number one for Tongfu, is getting some wards up. Look at what HYHY is doing, already blocking off the camp, that is going to help this tri lane have an easier time controlling the creeps in the lane. Yeah, absolutely. And the EG with this top try, as, as long as they can keep blocking this pool, they're looking in a really good position to win this lane. They're up against, I mean, Queen of Pain is hard to kill, but it's still a dual lane where they can get some decent farm, shut it down, and Batrider at bottom will just completely, or should pretty much destroy the Beastmaster. Yeah, we may see a very early first blood on this lane if Batrider tries to stay in the lane. Already four stacks, Demon's going to hit level two soon. I sound excited because you really have to be careful. Batrider can kill you at level two easily if you let those stacks pile up. Veronica doesn't have a magic wand either, which isn't that important right now. It's not going to really give you that much HP regen, but you do want to get it up as soon as possible. Expect to see that soon. For the moment, everyone playing passively. The one thing Tongfu has not been denied from doing, although we've seen some body blocks on this camp and creep blocks on that standard pull camp, they haven't kept long DD from pulling that safe camp. And well, it's going to limit their experience a little bit. EG could do some counter pulling of their own, uh, and it looks like that's what they're going to do right now. Ice path onto Jo, but they really can't initiate into this. I like this is smart from the Enigma. He doesn't need this pull to to jungle at top. He can easily. I mean, Enigma just amazing at jungling without it. But he's just doing it to help this lane at top. He can pull the creep wave back to the tower, and it denies a lot of XP from a tri lane. This tri lane with the Veno Lestrak lifestyle. If they're getting star for XP, it's really going to hurt them. Guys, I gotta point out, how has one CS? This is a really bad start for a Shadow Fiend. And he started with the Wraith Band. Look at HYHY just absolutely crushing this lane. The little bit of action potentially picking up top. Ice Path will connect on Jo. He doesn't have a point in rage yet, but the Gale hits too. The Splitter Thunder Long DD, and that will end the aggression for the moment. This is looking very good for EG in the laning stage. Mid lane, HYHY is absolutely crushing the Shadow Fiend. 7 and 4 to 3 and 0. Oh. Demon, of course, is gonna beat Beastmaster Bottom. And the tri lane hasn't gotten kills yet, but once they hit level 3 on the Venomant, so they have maybe two points in Edict or Split Earth and a point in Poison Stain, they can absolutely look to kill these supports. In fact, they're going to go on move yeah. now. Why? They're going to have to try... It's a long slow. Even after the blink, they can still reach him. Oh, fear! He doesn't have... I think it was just a tiny oh. bit too far away. The Gale not going to land. I thought they had that. Even after the blink, fear was, I think, just a tiny, tiny bit out of range. Just didn't have faith in his ability to land that split earth, and I think he it was maybe just out of range as well. You know, this is something that is worth mentioning briefly, is we're not seeing fear on a farmer. We're seeing him, and we saw this, in fact, from EG when they're playing IG. Now, they are using a stand in HYHY, so maybe that has something to do with it, but generally a little bit odd to see the one position player swapped all the way into a, a four or five, whatever you want to call it at this point. Milk generally playing wow. that four role, so this is a I, big I switch it, for him. 
It's entirely because of, of the stand-in, HYHY, who is a solo player, and I, I, in this 1v1 matchup at mid, I mean, very, very ping-dependent, and it, the, the Shadow Fiend's getting shut down so bad because of HYHY's ability to just dominate a 1v1 lane, especially on the on the server to his advantage. So I think it was more a, a strategic right. decision for me using, using this stand-in in the mid lane. Well, the strategy seems to be working so far, although Hal is starting to pick up his farm, being pulled that region, starting with the Wraith ban. And once you get that level 2 raise, life really gets a lot easier. But they did slow him down a little bit, so he's not going to be absolutely destroying the lane for the moment. My big concern is that Demon is almost level 6. He's already got Tranquil Boots, and we might even see him just buy a TP scroll and head towards top at some point. In fact, he's thinking about Veronica. Veronica is getting levels. I gotta say, he's doing pretty well. I'm honestly surprised Demon hasn't tried to force the issue more bottom yet. Yeah, Demon, I think I think Veronica's just playing safe enough that Demon can't get any kills. Demon probably a bit reluctant to get too aggressive. He knows he's just free farming away. He's gonna get a ridiculously fast Link Dagger at this rate. And ooh, TP towards top lane. Rage his Prophet denying Howe of Runes. And Here we Howe go. still on 12 creeps. Oh, Demon, not ready to go in, but really zoning Veronica out. That's what you would need to do in this lane, is even if you're not gonna kill the Beastmaster, really force him out of experience range. You've got Tranquil Boots, he's got Nada. He's just got a Magic Wand. And well, this is the other benefit of that Prophet solo mid. You can max teleport first. You don't need the trance to jungle. You're going to have plenty of mana to use your ult. And more importantly, you can control the runes with teleport. That's what we're seeing now. EG, they did deliver a smoke. They're going to rotate towards mid. Shadow Fiend, very gankable mid. And also bypassing a critical ward for Tang Fu. This could be our first blood. Hal could be in a bit of trouble. He's got to retreat to that tower. Will he have the kind of map awareness that we saw previously from Joe? Not sure he's going to. Oh, he's going to get caught out. This looks bad. This looks extremely bad. One race hits. And he gets stunned. That's our first blood. Claim by fear. Great rotation by EG. Using that smoke. Bypassing the wards. Meanwhile, Demon bottom lane finds that solo kill and lives with 10 HP. Shadow of the Bat. <laughs> Shadow of the Bat indeed. Well, EG getting kills on mid lane, bottom lane. Demon up to 1400 gold. Very fast blink dagger coming out from him. And HYH is up to 1500 gold now at the mid lane. I, possibly just a fast minus, or maybe he wants to get that mech for his team and get very active in pushing, ganking towers, and then come back for the minus a bit later on. He's TPing top though, he's found Sancheng. Life's still gonna go in, he's got the Quelling Blade to get through these these trees if he wants. He's not gonna do so, but Sancheng does not stand a chance. Um, and another kill going away VG. Moo picks up one though on the back lines of play, but that is pretty much gonna be the Midas. Moo needs to blink away, just escapes, but he's trapped! He's trapped on the trees! J.O.'s tag, Quelling Blading through, no he's- that's not a verb, <laughs> but he's not gonna find him in the end. Oh, they need Quelling a... through- Quelling through the jungle. <laughs> that it works. <laughs> Uh, so Moot Mo does get the counter kill, and, and I think crucially he is going to hit level 6 despite being up against this tri lead. Yeah, it's. I, I, this it, it is Queen of Pain getting some decent farm and levels at the top lane. He's not going to. Well, he hasn't got any points in the Sonic Wave just yet. Probably actually does want to get, get it against the tri lane. For now, a lot's resting on Moot in this Queen of Pain with Shadow Fiend not having the best start and Beastmaster being completely. Left out. Veronica is getting levels. Once Beastmaster hits level 6, maybe we'll see him just look to try to set up some kills in this mid or top lane, because he's not going to be able to stay bottom on his own against the Batrider. And Demon, Demon's going in again. Demon really wants to get another kill on Veronica. Oh, here we go. The Batrider pulling him into the lasso. Prophet all bounces through. This should be an easy kill. Veronica will drop to this. Cannot escape. Too slow. No chance. Actually pops the wad, hoping... And the salve, but dies anyway. Additional economic dam damage done. Demon will be very happy about that. You know, the one thing that I found interesting is J.O. isn't maxing Rage or Open Wounds. He's actually leveling up Feast, which generally you only see from a jungle lifesteal. I, I really think Max Rage would be very potent in this game, although he is up against a Beastmaster. And, 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 and an Enigma, so I guess there are two ways to stun him anyway. Yeah, there's there's ways to go through that, but hey, it's it's going to be EG who are right now looking... They're looking solid. This is, this, this is not just... HYH in the mid lane. I mean, the tri lane's working out for them. They've got life still again, decent amounts of farm at the top lane. He's got the early treads. Demon, uh, just completely winning a, winning a lane that he should win, but winning it with a, a, a big margin. Here comes Howe. He's got an invis rune. Shadow Fiend actually ganky, which is also a great way not to get ganked herself, but Veronica's gonna get caught out. Fear is rotated in for this profit TP. And again, Veronica just getting completely obliterated and blows the roar. 
no idea why, but how is here, and the Queen of Pain, they want to try and set something up, but they are so squishy. Seems very dangerous to go in on this, especially with Demon being here, he doesn't have Firefly, he doesn't have Lasso, although it is cooling down soon, and Munchkin's gonna retreat to the tower, they seem to know something's up, just because of how aggressively positioned Moo is, and Hal's off the map, now the Prophet TP's away. Tons of wasted time for Hal, and a Roar used up as well. Tom Fu is just not being very efficient in any respect this game. Yeah, and EG are going to start pulling away. You've got your Midas up on the Nature's Prophet once he brings it out to him. You've got all these heroes getting some decent farm, decent levels. Fear, I mean, he gets a successful gank on bottom lane. So the supports will slowly get some farm, get some levels themselves. And uh, for, for Tong Fu, they're really not making much happen. They had Queen of Pain come all the way bottom and not get a kill. Not really do all that much. Now just going to take over the bottom lane. Maybe make Beastmaster take top, go mid. Uh, but there's just not enough space for all these heroes to farm. Beastmaster needs to catch up, but so, do, so does Shadowfeed. All these Tongfu heroes are just too far behind right now. They are quite far behind, and well, the nice thing about J.O. hitting level 6 and leveling up Feast is he can just start jungling in this lane. And Lifestealer is a difficult kill. Even if you kill him, even if you use the Roar in the Black Hole and you bring him down, that's a lot of spells to do it, which means the rest of your team is a little bit, breathes a little bit easier, feels a little bit safer. Demon... Thinking about going in mid, he's getting real close to that blink dagger, and then what already feels like a very kind of claustrophobic Mac for Tan Fu just gets even a little bit smaller. I also want to point out Long DD has been shut down pretty damn hard this game, in the sense that he spent a lot of time ganking. He's only level six. Normally at this point your Nick was a lot higher. Prophet all bounces through. Now he's caught by the sprout. Long DD should die unless he black holes this, but no, is he gonna drop it? Not going to. Four heroes were in position. EG. The right place at the right time for everyone this game. Although fear might be in the wrong place as I say that. This should be an easy counter kill. But I think they're quite happy with that trade. Shutting down the jungle enigma in exchange for your support the track. They'll take it now That's middle lane. Shadow Finn, how? Oh, he's going to get caught out. TP's coming in. Queen of Pain wants Malk. Malk, oh, he's going to survive. He's got plenty of HP with that magic one there. And Moot, keeping in once again. Unsetek the game. Kill and h y is coming from behind. The blink's on cooldown. Can you get one more right click off? No. Moot just before the blink. HY, HY picks up his... <laughs> First kill of the game, but he's been in six, seven of the kills so far for EG, seven of the eight, and he is getting a lot of farm going his way. That's, that's, between him and Batrider, these two have just been total, uh, five, five kills involved for, for Demon. Both of these ha solos have an incredibly high kill involvement, which is exactly what you expect from them when you have a, an easy lane for the Batrider, you have a, a lane where, you know, Nature's Prophet, HY, HY just plays really well. This is what you want, this is what you need, and boy, are they pulling it off beautifully so far. In comes Demon, in comes Fear. They're smoked up, he's got the blink and a haste. This looks like a total disaster. Demon probably gonna score two kills for his team here. If he starts a long DD, I don't know how they stop this initiation. In he comes, need a black hole, not able to drop it. Now the Firefly, actually, sorry, he doesn't have a lasso, but Demon actually juking beautifully split Earth on two. What a play by Fear, mega kill for Demon. This might be another. Long DD getting kited left, right, and center. The TP in will force him back for the moment. Blake forward by Moo. Scream is going to whip. Actually forced to cancel the ultimate. Now Demon TP's out. Long DD down to 100 HP. Pops the soul ring with about 10. There's a profit on the map. What are you doing, Long DD? In comes that profit. Perhaps it's a bait. Perhaps it's a trap. Long DD's waiting. Will Fear hit a split earth through the trees? Not throwing one just yet. But boy, are they thinking about now how actually catches out. HY, HY, five heroes devoted to this top defense, and can they even find anything? Roar onto Geo. They may find Geo. It is, it is a trap indeed. He's going to go eat into these neutral creeps, so he does not stand much of a chance here. There's a black hole up as well if they need it. Not going to happen. EG, they lose they lose life lifesteal, but what a great clash at the top lane. Demon just doing amazing work. Just hiding Tong for a round, getting kills for his team, and fear as well. Just really well executed. Oh, Demon's not done. He's found Long DD. He wants to pick him up, preventing a black hole. He brings him to the high ground. Long DD is trapped. Oh. The Firefly will finish him off. Demon, what a play. Absolutely unbelievable performance by Demon so far. And this Batrider is, it has become, if it wasn't before, his best hero in Dota 2 in this most recent patch. And we're seeing why. We're seeing an absolutely dominating performance. Already up to 5k net worth. And he's farming heroes. He's not farming creeps. This is what we wanted Tongfu to do. Although Demon may finally get brought down. This is a big streak to end. Nice raise by Hal. Does get that kill. 500 unstoppable streak gold bonus for him. Goal desperately needed by Tongfu, and quite a bit of experience. The tower, though, is going to drop bottom. Will it be denied? It's not. The Treants get it. Fear with the backstab. Manning up onto Veronica. Here come the raises, though. Fear is overextended. Fear will play. Veronica drops low to that Prophet ult, but Munchkin just not going to commit. Speaking of Munchkin gods, he is up to 2.1k. 
between the Prophet and the Batrider, they're not only finding kills, but they're also pushing towers. And they're getting a, pushing towers, getting a heap of XP. Demon with all these kills he's getting in his, his involvement. He's up to level 11. Nature's Prophet about to hit level 10 uh, with all this mice getting bonus XP. And they're going to go for this last T1 tower at the top lane. And there's just nothing Tong Fu can do to keep this up. And well, Munchkin, HYHA, has picked up a Mithril Hammer. He's going for a DPS type build. I, either Desolator, maybe even just the Maelstrom to do some serious right click damage. And, I mean, I think this is a good decision against series like Shadowfiend, Beastmaster. I mean, they, there's some damage coming out from the lifestyle, but just not enough right now. Here comes the next bomb. I think Tung Fu might have just spotted this if they were really paying attention. Could have been just in the fog, though. And, well, is Munchkin actually going to look to make a move? Another smoke from EG. Every smoke has been met with at least one kill, if not two. Here comes the next bomb. This is Shadowfee not being very happy. Camper Demon jumps in, pulls him back with the lasso. Out pops the next, and an easy kill for EG. Boy, do they know how to use this combo. If they have a good start, they are really effective at keeping the pressure up. The Prophet, the Batrider, and the Lifesteal are just everywhere at once. Yeah, it's really a uh, really mobile lineup from EG, and they're using it well. And Demon, he's got up to 700 gold. We'll see a fast force up already, uh, probably with this Blink Dagger as well. And EG, they're not done pushing, applying pressure to towers with this huge farm advantage they've acquired. They're going to start taking down these towers one by one. I mean, they don't even feel like they need the mech. Maybe Malk's going to start building one with all this gold that he's getting from towers on the Venomancer. But HYHO says, Maelstrom it is, and he, he's now finished that. And EG, I think they just go top, get another tower, go bottom when they want, just keep on farming the map, taking tower by tower, and just incrementally getting further and further ahead. Right, and, and, and along with that, not only taking out the towers, but following it up with those reinforcement wards. Well, that's what we're seeing right now. A ward towards the Roshan pit, that's going to be an objective of their soon. Wards on the high ground, Venomance or Plague Wards there as well. Just creating that net, sort of restricting Tang Fu, trying to asphyxiate them. Slowly but surely. EG, they thought about pressuring mid, but they did back off head towards top. Seems smart. And look at this. Tong Fu, maybe... This is a moment where you're like, oh, Melk is overstayed as welcome. Maybe we try and kill him off. But with five heroes missing, or four missing at a profit bottom, you really can't get aggressive here. Yeah, it's EG. Or oh, actually, maybe Fear going going off a bit alone here. He gets spotted out. He's just putting down a ward here. He's going to get out of there, and Tong Fu, well, they just, they just don't even have their sort of first level of items up. Long DD is still trying to get his mech. Oh, Demon, is he going to leave him on the cliff again? He is. Sancheng is stuck up there. Firefly is going to finish him off. We're seeing the same thing at top lane with the Enigma. Demon is just spot on with this Batrider play. You cheeky little bugger. Demon, and he pushes oh. Long DD up onto the cliff. Demon, Demon Dota for you, ladies and gentlemen. Melk will get roared. Melk will get brought down, but... Veronica in some trouble here. One more auto attack. Munchkin there to clean up the Maelstrom. Not even on his hero yet, but doesn't need it. Fear giving chase. Demon giving chase. This is an absolute disaster. Infest just for an additional burst damage. Maybe not. Jaya thought about staying inside of Demon, but decides he wants a piece of the pie. Fear actually gets the last kill. Gods pulls one onto the cliff. Flame breaks another there. Who is this man? And <laughs> Oh my god, what play by Demon. Demon. It just sums him up. He, he always does these kind of plays. He's just known so... Playing that offlane solo, he's known for being so hard to kill, using tangos to just shoot people in trees, using all these these tricks he just... He's refined from playing so many games in Dota 2. He plays a lot of pub games all day long, and it, he uses these tricks he learns in competitive games and makes it work and pulls off these amazing plays. It's just... I don't know. No, nothing else to say. Just great play coming out of Demon right now. And I'm not sure what you do if you're Tong Fu at this point. In theory, you have this big team fight lineup. They, they just can't find an opening. EG, with the early start, they're so mobile and they're pretty strong at split pushing. If you group up, maybe they don't fight you head on. And if they do, it comes with instant initiation on your Enigma, who has no answer for it. They don't have anything to keep them safe, like a Vengeful Spirit swap. Or maybe a glimpse to send Batrider back. Batrider jumps in, jumps away. Gale hits on two. Prophet ult bouncy through, doing some good damage the mech to keep them alive or maybe not in comes jail long dd always the first here to be focused this time it's veronica is that a mistake will we see a big black hole only catches two can demon cancel this he's got the lasso not able to actually get around the black hole to pull it off queen of pain ult as well doing some good damage much kid dropping low a lot of heroes low but few dying long dd running the boar slowing him or actually sorry that's the venom so the boars on his team profit will drop in comes J.O. Shadow Feed ult. Good damage. Not enough, perhaps. Maybe it is. Tong Fu turning the fight around, but they can't kill J.O. They haven't killed Demon yet. Finally, the lasso about a minute into this fight, and Moo is about to be kidnapped. 
Yep, Jero gets picked up by Queen of Paint, couldn't toggle his arm in time. Demon's not done though, he wants move, moves, going high ground, not gonna help him. Demon finds himself more kills, he's against three, he's gonna 1v3 this practically. Nate the Prophet's gonna buy back to try and pick up some more kills. Demon, no flame break to stop that TP, but it's Howe who is gonna take a fall. Demon picks up his 11th kill of the game, triple kill, mega kill streak, Shadow of the freaking Bat. This isn't, this ain't no shadow of the bat. This is like a gigantic, this is like the Batman side in the sky, man. This is, this is a big in your face kind of bat rider we're seeing. And it, it was a pretty decent fight for Tang Fu. The black hole hit on two was not canceled. I think the entire duration was channeled there. They got their, a decent shadow feed ult off from the trees. They were kiting the life stealer pretty well. And it just wasn't quite enough. They couldn't bring everyone down, and that's the nice thing about EG's lineup. There's not one hero, like a farmed anti-mage, that defines this squad. It's all of the heroes that can have a contribution. Even a hero like Venomancer was really making life difficult in that fight. Slowing down, I believe it was the Beastmaster, just making it very hard to run away. Yeah, really. Uh, and now we're seeing big items. HYHY picks up his uh, Mjolnir. Uh, Venomancer's Malk, I mean, he had such a big impact in that fight. Once he gets his mech up, he's going to be looking even stronger. He can add the heals to his team as well as having those slows. And Tong Fu are just looking for kills wherever they can. They came out all right on top on that fight, but this next fight is just going to be crucial for them. They've got to find some pickoffs. They've got to win this next team fight if they want to stay in this game. They're also up against Double Midas and a hero, a hero in Profit who farms really fast already. And it's not just that they're behind right now, it's that an even game pulls them farther and farther behind. In comes Demon, Moo blinks away, four step forward, grabs it with the lasso, out pops J.O. This combo, how many times are we going to see it from EG? Been working real well for them today so far, and do you go mid now? Do you go for do you go for the Roshan? For the moment, they're grouped up, they're thinking about Triads created, and looks like EG maybe want to force a no buyback. Queen of Pain doesn't have it. Maybe they will get Rax, or they're at least going to do some good chip damage if they want. Yeah, they're going to just slowly work away at this, maybe force some spam to come out. Beastmaster, he's got the Wild Axes, but this is this is hard to defend, and EG, they're just going to look for maybe another pickoff when possible. They've got 35 seconds on the Batrider ultimate, uh, so it's going to be a bit hard till that point comes up, but they just they just slowly chip away at this tower, back off when they need be. Uh, they may want to rotate bottom or top, though, because those outer towers could offer them some nice golds, there's some nice farm awaiting top lane as well. I don't think EG are in any rush to end this game. Well, they're just going to apply some pressure and then back off, and How has been doing his split push thing. It's dangerous to split push against this team, though. You're up against a Batrider, you're up against a Prophet with the Lifestealer Bomb. Now, he has a Black King bar, so unless Demon is there, he can TP away, at least until that Lifestealer gets a Basher, which I assume will be J.O.'s next item. It's what we've been seeing out of most Lifestealer players lately, and just giving you that additional lockdown, another way to kind of stun these heroes who, who want to be building BKBs. Is Tong Fu going to sneak a Roshan, gods? We talked about it. 67% win rate on the Dire, 47 on the Radiant, and you know Roshan has to be a big factor. It looks like they want to, but Venomancer, probably the most annoying hero in the game to try and sneak a Roshan against. HY HY trying to snipe the Kuri here. EG have a, a base ward. This Observe ward inside Tong Fu's base is just so crucial. Uh, HY HY almost gets the Kuri with that, just a mistimed TP. But either way, EG just going to look to tighten the noose. They've got great coverage bottom lane as well. And Tong Fu, they've got wards up of their own, and they're going to try and use that to get some pickoffs here. They've smoked up. Then They don't want to go Roshan, but the Venomance of Plague Wards are there going to prevent them from doing anything. But they're just going to use this to pick off a hero. Looks like HY HY is going to get caught out. Oh, Malk is in a lot of trouble as well. This could be big if they get two kills. Queen of Pain all just for him. Now Munchkin probably to die as well. Roar everything and the kitchen sink thrown. And well, that kitchen sink hurts sometimes. Especially if it's on the head. Demon Blinks in. Going in solo. In the five. You think? I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is the right decision. Oh, to it's going to try and make it work. There's the next bomb. He comes out. Geo. He's picked up one. It's actually Batrider who's got both the kills and Geo who now is going to run for his life. Shadow Fiend ultimate. Geo still trying to fight his way out of this one, but. EG, the numbers are against them. It was the 2v5 play, and now it is Demon just ripping through Tong Fu still somehow, some way. They're making it happen. Mu is just less than 100 HP. He's going to try TP out of this one. EG, th they lose two, but they still engage into five heroes. Where, what a play coming out from Demon. Where is the super size me Batrider when you need him? Where is that Batrider that's like five times as big as he should be? I can't believe we haven't gotten to see that bug this game because if it was ever appropriate, it is in this game. It looked really bad for Demon, but what we couldn't catch until right as he popped out was that the Lifestealer was lurking inside, and that's a lot of burst damage when you throw the Flame Break into that fight. 
Uh, when you jump in with the flaming, with the, uh, with the, the pat, the fire beneath them. Oh god, the spell name escaped you, the firefly. Uh, as well as the lasso and the life stealer infest, it's some decent burst and rage as well. They just brought those heroes down almost immediately. I think that infest hit four or five heroes with the, with the AoE damage. Yeah, abs I mean, insane. I, I, I'm watching this, I'm like, wait, Demon, why are you going in? And suddenly it hits me, oh, of course, there's a next in this game, and even with five heroes there, having used the raw, having uh -oh. used, thrown away most of their spells, right, it just wasn't going to go their oh. way. Oh, top lane. They found, they black hole for this. I mean, worth just throwing a black hole there, I think. Getting that kill on Nature's Prophet, worth its weight, and it just, it's going to buy time for, for Tong Fu at least. Maybe not, though. Demon, he's not done. He wants this Enigma. He's going in on two heroes. I'm not too sure about this. Pops it in this rune. And he's going to try to chase down Long DD here, but there's backup for him, and Demon, I think, just has to back off, I'm... wait for his teammates, and... <laughs> Although, I don't know if that's what he's going to do. <laughs> I love how you just see the flames. He's thinking about it. The, the invisible bat, but the flames beneath him. Pretty funny stuff there. Uh, and Demon, with the plate mail picked up as well, he's so damn tanky. It's really hard to burst him down. They have a burst damage lineup with Queen of Pain, with Beastmaster, with a, a, quite a bit of AoE, but they just can't bring him down quickly enough. In fact, he's going to spot on Sangshay. Surprised that he would even consider going here when you just saw Demon go in Viz, and he's going to die for that. In comes the backstab, though. This looks like maybe a pretty good fight. J.O. dropping low, infest inside Demon. Get me the hell out of here. Captain, he says, away, away. But Demon says, no, we're going back in. We're going for a little ride. Moo is going to hop aboard the bat plane, and he's not going to like where it takes him. Demon now lurking on the high ground. God, does he ever want to go in? Does this man ever stop? House dropping low, Red Rib Souls will get channeled, and that Link will force the from back. Demon. Demon says, not even coming close. I mean, sees this SF ultimate, blinks away, dodges all that, and now Moo, he's more back. He needs to try to find a kill, make something happen with this. He's found run into Geo as well as Nature's Prophet, HYHY. Maybe the victim here is Moo going to go back in. HY HY is uh, using the treants and he's not going to actually not the treants, sorry, the sprout on himself to try TP out, but it does get picked off. And That's. EG, they may find themselves in a bit of a roach fight here. Tongfu are grouped up around this, trying to take this, maybe having having won a small victory with that Nature's Prophet kill. You know, this Nature's Prophet thinks he's a bat rider. He just <laughs> keeps on ending up in the middle of five heroes, but he doesn't have a blink dagger. He doesn't have a four staff. He doesn't even have something like a BKB and. Yes, Tonk, we're using these these team fight ults like Black Hole and Single Heroes, but it's working out pretty well. Demon wants to steal the Aegis. He's on the high ground. He's thinking about it. He will be forced back. How is gonna No pick up the Aegis! Pick up the Aegis! Demon could easily go in and snipe it, but with a lane ward, I guess they feel pretty safe. But really you don't want to leave that on the floor against a bat rider and a prophet. Uh, although that profit is against said. Demon as against well. Demon, I mean, yeah. of all the players who would be stealing an Aegis at this point in the game, I'd say Demon is up there with the best of them, and EG now, I'd love to see them maybe start getting some smoke ganks happening, just start the pickups. Even with an Aegis on Tong Fu, I don't think that's going to phase EG at all. They're going to say, well, so what? We've got all this farm, we've got this Batrider who's just playing sensationally, is leading these fights, engaging so well, and, and always coming out on top. He's only died once this entire game, and that was a long, long time ago. And he's, what is he now? 16, 1 and 6. 22 out of 26 kills. You guys can do the math, but that sounds like 85, maybe even close, not quite, but close to 90% kill participation in a game, which you can't ask for anything more from a ganking solo like a Batrider. And the pressure has slowed down for the moment and gives Tong Fu a little bit of time to sort of farm up, try and... Now, they're not going to pull ahead because they're still up against the Double Midas. They can't really farm their own jungle that safely. I would like to point out that Tong Fu has done a very nice job of keeping some wards up on the map, and one thing I think we should have seen from EG by this point is... A gem. I'd, maybe one of their supports had it, and in all the chaos of this game, we missed it. But needing, you really want to have a gem just to limit the mobility of this team, and it's allowing Tongfu to get, even getting something for them. I feel is kind of more than they should. Yeah, because how at this point he's got his BKB. He's going to have a man style very soon, and he's. I mean, he's doing all right here. You've got Life Steal with an armlet getting his basher up. It's a nice way of dealing with an SF BKB. So in some ways, he will match up all right against against how but there's a lot of just kiting potential the range attack from the shadow fiend the queen of pain to blink him around you've got the beastmaster raw so it's not really a very friendly game for life stealer even if he can do okay against shadow fiend and shadow fiend he's on par with most of these radiance carries if anything he's ahead of them nature's prophet just with the meonia midas treads is uh picked up uh, being picked off and just played very aggressively as of late and I feel Tong Fu still in this game with a, with a decent chance here. Oh, Demon's got the, of course, with the boots of travel, he wants to force the issue. I also want to point out, Demon has, you know, one thing that aggressive players like Demon struggle with is sometimes is, is knowing when to back off, but 
Guys, he's he's made his he's pretty much choos, chosen all the right made all the right decisions at all the right moments. You know, in this case, he TP's in. He immediately realizes it's not a good idea, and he disengages. How many times do we see Demon force the issue, and not just Demon, but any player who loves to go for these kills, who loves to be aggressive like him? It's always a delicate balance. He's striking it very well. Like you said, though, the Shadow Feed is getting big. He's got the he's got the Manta style up. Now, Tong Fu's win rate on the Dire, a lot of that comes before the changes to the Aegis, and I don't know that they can be aggressive with this Aegis, so in some senses, it's it's gold for your team, but I'm not sure if we're, we're even going to see it get used in a fight. Yeah, I think uh, Tong Fu is just going to continue to play defensive, continue to farm, even with Mantel and how they want that next big item, they want to start building his Butterfly, maybe just going to help them dominate some life still, and the support heroes, the the solos, Queen of Pain trying to build up a sheep stick, just wants this level 16 now as well, so... Tongfu, they can't really use this stage. It's maybe the next one or two coming uh, coming up after they can, and in the long run, it's maybe something that will help them because Tongfu want to take this game really late. They want to make it go 45, 50, 60 minutes because Life Stealer won't be that effective in the late game as a melee carry. He gets kited around. It's kind of why he saw a drop in popularity. And then you've got the Batrider who will sure he's a, he can be a great late game impact, but he's not a carry by any means. Yeah, generally I think you'd prefer to have something like a Beastmaster in the late game with that inner beast, giving your carry additional attack speed, having the Hawk for vision all the time, not just when uh, not just when the Firefly is up, and, and having Roar, which doesn't put you in kind of a dicey spit situation. You can stay back and still disable someone through BKB. And they have the kid of late game, although Mudgekit is about to be caught out. There's your Roar. HY HY just keeps on getting picked off. This is the third or fourth death we've seen from him. And boy, it almost feels like late game. This game has been so crazy, but it's actually only 29 minutes in. These deaths are really adding up. How fast did we see that that Midas Mjolnir? He also bought back and died again. Otherwise, I think we'd see a Prophet who easily is the most net worth in the game. Instead, he's sort of in the middle of the pack. Yeah, at this point, it's it feels like we've reached late game a lot earlier than we normally would. And Tong Fu, despite the way Bat Demon's playing and stuff, this game's still somewhat in the balance. Shadow Fiend very up there in terms of net worth. He's uh, almost on par with the Bat, the Life Stealer. They've got the Queen of Pain who's just struggling a bit, and that's really the one here that Tong Fu need to get some catch up on. Oh, yeah. And then with Enigma, having a, having a Blink Dagger up is going to be crucial. Landing these Black Holes, having, just having the Black Hole, uh, sort of uh, the fear factor there, is going to be what prevents EG from maybe going for some pushes, because Long DD is pretty, pretty damn good at this Enigma. He just always manages to find those perfect times to niche, and he's not going to be anywhere near Demon in the front line. Right, he got picked off a bunch early, but he hasn't really been picked off much since that. His position has been pretty good. The one time he's had a two-hero black hole opportunity, he landed it, it wasn't cancelled. And as this game goes later, if we examine the late game matchup, I think Tung Fu have the edge as far as heroes go. They have two... They have two ultimates that go through BKBs in the black hole, in the roar. They, they're they up against the life sealer, a melee carry who can be kited. And a lineup that's good at kiting him. Demon might get caught out, four staffing away. Are they going to roar this? They have the roar. Shiva's guard already used. Roar onto Demon. Now the ice path as well. Everyone fighting the firefly, but with the mech, they don't care. Finally, they're going to bring down this pesky bat rider. Godlike streak ended. So much gold for wow. him. Oh, uh, just you a pick off they can't afford to give can up. Be playing one of the game, you can be playing the game of your life, 16, 1, and 6, but one mistake can be the difference between winning and losing this game. So, Demon, that's a big one, and this is going to be a tier 2 tower. It's going to be a lot of gold going the way of this side team, and he's got no buyback, having just bought the Shiva's Guard. So, Tong Fu, they can look to take this down the mid lane. They've still got the Aegis, although only for maybe another 30 seconds or so. It's almost been this... No, it just disappeared this second, so... No more ages for Tongfu, and with that, they may want to back off. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna back off. We also have to keep in mind, as far as the late game matchup goes, they have a Jakiro who, yes, you can rage to sort of prevent that from stunning you, but if you land a nice ice pad, that's absolute devastation in a team fight. One of the best late game supports when BKBs aren't on cooldown when the magic, or when they're not available, when the magic booty isn't there. Profit, oh, I thought he might have been thinking about a courier snipe, but not gonna go for it in the end. Also, notice the warding from Tong Fu. You gotta admire sort of the resilience of this game. They have been absolutely just <laughs> not in a good position, not having much fun, and on the back foot for the majority of this game, but they're keeping the wards up. They snuck a Roshan earlier, they're finding pickoffs, and they're not afraid to do things like use a black hole on a single hero if you need to just to get a kill. Now they have a sight device on Mu. Demon was sensational, EG was playing great, but are they just losing steam at this point? Do they need to be forcing the issue? Can they take this to the ultra late game with HY HY dying a few times with Lifestar not being the best late game carry? Sure, you've got the double Midas. Is that enough? 
I don't think EG want, yeah, I don't think they want to take this really late game. I think they will be losing out in the long term. You've got an Eagle Song now, but how? And the difference has been that Tongfu are just making the smarter mid to late game decisions. The warding has been a lot more. Look at, I mean, the wards where they've got up, they've got these deep lane wards. They know everything EG are doing. They're finding the pickoffs, they're finding the openings, and they're using smoke ganks really well. Every time they've done one, they, one time they go into the jungle, they get two kills. They got Batrider recently, and now they're looking for another smoke gank, and they're trying to find pickoffs at the bottom lane. This needs to be a fight that EG come out on top of, otherwise they're in a lot of trouble. Oh, and this looks like a potentially a bad fight, but the Plague Ward, as well as Jay walking towards the smoked up heroes, is going to reveal them. Log DD blinks in. I'm surprised Demon didn't grab that, but just doesn't feel they have enough backup, I guess, or the right position to go in. Demon blocked by the Plague Ward of his own team. Will be forced around. In comes Munchkin, HY, HY. Charging forward, and now the infest. Who got infested? I believe it was Demon. Here comes the Bat Bomb. He's running in. Does Tong Fu have a gem? They don't. This looks pretty, pretty damn good. Can they find the opening? This is a deep sea diving kind of expedition, and well, the backup isn't there. He's gonna go in anyway. Kidnaps Hal. Can he bring him to the low ground? He's too slow. He doesn't do it. Split Earth on two. Is it enough though? Hal's BKB forced out, and gods, nobody dies after all that. Well, nobody dies and very little damage was done as well. Beastmaster gets low from the Venomance ultimate, but a big, big anti-climax. The tension is there, though. I mean, both teams so, so close to things. Enigma was just trying... It got caught... Enigma was out of position. I mean, that Blink Kid was so reckless. Batrider could have tried to punish it. And then on the retreat, Enigma was almost in position to get caught out. So, uh, EG, they miss a bit of an opportunity there, and Tong Fu, they deal with that aggression well, but now their bottom lane being pushed in. EG feel they, they're confident, they can just take this and force a fight. Uh, they've got the BKB on fear on the left track, and with this, they've got a lot of pushing power. They've got, they're a deadly force to be reckoned with. They are, at the same time though, one of the reasons they're looking to be aggressive is that Requiem of Souls is on cooldown, and more importantly, the BKB is, but it's coming up soon. How many times have we seen this from Demon's Batrider? It's going from low ground to high ground. Batrider, one of the best heroes in the game, much like a Vengeful Spirit swap, and just finding those pickoffs, allowing you to breach the high ground, break the game wide open, crack that defense, but not quite able to do it. You really don't want to initiate on him. I'm honestly surprised they're trying to. There is a lot of backup here. Tang Fu, maybe just get a little bit impatient. You definitely want to focus other heroes before this bad. Yeah, Batrider is getting tankier and tankier with the with, with the Shivers Guard. And he's, the thing is, if they devote too much time to killing him, then the other heroes are going to be causing a lot of damage. Uh, you've got Nature's Prophet and the Lifestealer, who are just at this point in the game really, really beefy. As, as far as DPS goes, if they're not dealt with right away, Tongfu are in trouble. But they've got the heroes who can deal with them with this kiting potential. And how this buys time for how's BKB to cool down for Requiem of Souls to come back online, as well as for him to get close to a butterfly. Now there is a hex, there's this a scythe device on the field, but Prophet just picks that up, HYHY. Went for the early Mjolnir, now goes back for the scythe device. So if he gets that hex off at the right moment, the evasion won't be there. But if it is there, that's 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 an item you really want to have against a hero like Lifestealer. Who, if he's hitting with that with those bashes, if he's not missing, you're gonna die pretty quickly. I also want to point out Shadow Fiend has a Manta style, which against a hero like Lifestealer can be pretty big if you Manta out of open wounds. You won't be slowed, you can kind of walk away with that move speed from the Asha. Can really add up, and like you said, there is some kiting potential. We're getting to a point in the game, guys, where it all really comes down to initiation. If Tongfu find the right opening, they start with a Blink Roar. They start with, well, this looks to be a dead Melk. Melk probably not living through this. Blink in. There's the Malefice. Melk out of position. Not a big deal to lose your Venomancer. Wow. Although Roche is up, and, and so maybe it is a bit of a big deal. Yeah, Roche is up, and Malk on his way to that, that prestigious Malk award. 0-5 so far. Top lane. Have to see if he can get there. He's still, he's still got a lot of deaths to go, and oh. That's... Who goes down? Big pick up for EG. Oh, here comes the huge team fight. Batrider caught in the Roshan pit. Did he get bashed? He's getting to Malefist, I believe. Does escape to the high ground. Barely at that. The fight really out of position, but Long DD is going to get picked off. Demon picking off that Enigma. Pretty big play. J.O. comes in, and in these chaotic team fights, when, when Sanfu don't get their orderly openings, Bat is generally king. Although, as I say that, they're going to back off. A buyback from the Enigma. Tong Fu desperately want this E just long Danny Blake said he's thinking about the black hole dropping that midnight pulse four step oh no he got pushed into demon unfortunate the flame break not where he wanted it to be where's that roar it's cooling down is demon really gonna escape oh look at these jukes impressive Shadowfiend decided not to ulti that he's like okay we got this kill without it but using a black hole and they don't even kill demon the plus armor from the shivers guard preventing a lot of that Shadowfiend damage and Big, big loss, as uh, Tongfu, it looks like they want to go into this eight, this 
the Roshan pick get this Aegis. Demon actually invis though could look to try and do some sneaky moves. Oh. There's no sentries, there's no dust. Actually, no, there is, sorry, right there on the ground, sitting in front of me. What am I talking about? <laughs> uh, but Tongfu, they've, they've got to back off. They're, there's too many EG heroes up, and uh, Nature's Prophet pressuring the top lane can TP in at any time There's as well. no black hole. This could be a bad fight for Tongfu if they get caught out of position. Speaking of that, it comes Demon. Catches out how this is the hero you want to focus on the side of Tongfu. How's dropping low. Can't get off that BKB. He explodes. It's the secondary Requiem doing a little bit. In comes Queen of Pain. Cleans up the Batrider. But the bigger question is, can they bring down the Life Stealer? Fear's out of position. Fear is going to drop an EG. There was a buyback from someone, I believe. Shadow Fiend buys back Tongfu. God damn it, they want this Roshan. Yeah, Tongfu. I mean, Shadow Fiend as well as Demon, though. He wants to contest this. He's got no ultimate for 20 seconds. But by the time Tongfu go in that Roshan, but he's going to have it up soon. And Nature's Prophet trying to stall them at this top lane by pushing it out. And, ooh, J.O., this is not where you want to be. No Roar is up. He's going to try TP out of this. Is there the damage that's needed? There's not. Tong Fu, they're still in the clear here. They should be able to get this Roshan, but they have got to worry about this top lane. HYHY are playing a lot of pressure. HYHY could use this teleport scroll, go back to base, and then use this teleport ability with it and fast to jump oh, the lifesteal in. in. Going into the Roshan, but he wants to steal it. Oh, he's gone. He's not going to get the Aegis. He's trying to force stuff out of this. Demon in a bit of trouble here. If they can kick him off, Demon, what are you doing? This has just been a complete turnaround in gameplay from him. From what we saw at the start, he gets picked off. Trying to be just too flashy there and well, pays for it with his life. Well, Batrider is also a hero that falls off. It's not just the play. It's, you know, the kind of impact a Batrider can have at 20 minutes. It's a lot less at 40 minutes into the game. Especially when Tongfu are getting tankier. You can't burst them down as easily. And hey, let's be honest. He's blinking into the Roshan pit and trying to perform what needs to be a split-second maneuver with quite a bit of pain. And, well, maybe you just have to give that one up. Shadow Blade on Munchkin. It seems like EG is thinking about sort of a plan B of a split push, a pickoff style, which, well, they've been doing it so far, but this is even more of a commitment to it. You could be going for more of a team fight build, something like a BKB, but HYHY just wants the Shadow Blade, wants to be everywhere at once and, and just find these pickoffs. It's got the next bomb coming. He's got life seals infested in the Nature's Prophet array, so he's going to be looking for that teleport in, maybe even a Shadow Blade as well, to try to lead things off. And there we go, he's TPing towards the mid lane. Oh no. Gonna maybe lead this to the Shadow Blade. He's going to run right into how, how. Whoa, needs to stop blocking Geo. Geo can get in. They pick off Shadow Fiend. He's got Aegis though. And uh, that's, I mean, that's kind of what Tongfu want to use the Aegis for, anyways. They're not looking to push uh -oh. with this, anyways. Geo is going to stop getting roared up. Big SF Ultimate. Geo just gets completely annihilated. Fear in the front. Grind. It Popping his BKB, but he's still going to go down by the looks of things. Mook going to chase him with the scream. One more right clicks. All that's needed. Fear. Short lived for this world, I fear. And uh, he <laughs> it well. Oh, Song Fu, fine too. And may look to go push with this. There's uh, two key heroes for EG. Oh on my the god. Sideline. Oh man. Prophet TP's top. Almost gets spotted out. That would have been a disaster if he got killed off there. This is the difference between one team having their initiator online in the Beastmaster and one team not, the Batrider dead. That's why we saw Tongfu get those pickoffs. The question though is can they actually turn it into something more? I think they're all right with just getting those kills, but they want to siege this. Shadow Fiend had an illusion rune and a Mantis style. It's an army of Shadow Fiends, but it's a profit ult to bring them all down. One ult to rule them all. How actually pushed in by the flame break. Blink in. Hacks onto Demon. Demon might die again. The black hole is here, but he doesn't have mana for it. Oh, Demon's gonna live now. The, potentially the turnaround for Ronica. Ghost Scepter can't keep him alive. Dies to that life there. Long DD does have the black hole. How so low? Hacks will die. He's TP'd in. He's picked off two right off the bat. Even with Demon going down, EG are gonna find these kills. HYHY triple kill. Big TP. Great way to come from behind, and now he infests Lifestealer into the Nature's Prophet. May go look for this pick up at top lane, Sanchang. Oh, the Courier. Uh -oh. That's gonna be. Beam me, <laughs> beam me up, HYHY, he says. And Well, they're gonna get the Courier, now it's straight down mid for them. They don't want Tongfu getting another Aegis. The good news for Tongfu is if they can get back in time, they do have a Black Hole, they're gonna have that Beastmaster Roar. They're dead for 40 seconds, so they have a gl Oh, never mind, EG's already breached the high ground top. They're going to work on this tier three. Forget Ugh, I don't think they can backdoor this, but they're gonna try, damn it. Maybe they can! Maybe they can! It's dropping quickly! Oh, someone from Tongfu needs to stun them, but it's only the Twin Hunter Dragon left! EG, backdoor to victory! Something they learned from FTFC. They've done it once against Quantic, I believe, in Raid Call. They're not quite gonna bring this Rax down, but they do secure a tier three. Force out a buyback as well. Big victory, big turn of events for this team. 
Yeah, and EG aren't done pushing. They're breaching the mid lane as well. They may go for a split push, and it's HH trying to back to all the top racks so they get fear. He's going to BKB for survivability, and EG, they may get the top racks out of this really smart split push. Great way to use the nature's profit here in the late game. Oh, here comes Demon, catches out Queen of Pain, wants to burst him down. Moo is low. Moo is dead. Where, oh, where is that black hole when you need it? Long DD was busy top. Trying to help defend against this push, and EG with the split pressure. This Long DD getting picked off at top. Nature's Prophet just exit, almost gets the kill without that mech. He gets a kill, and this uh, is... H H Y H Y at top, and this split pressure. Tongfu just completely falling apart in a matter of seconds here. Well, this is exactly what EG's lineup is best at. When you have Bat Ready, you have Prophet with the Shadow Blade. Why group up as five? Why give them the big black hole? Spread out, get the courier picks, put split push, and. and Pull Tong Fu apart at the seams. Don't let them get that death ball going. Don't let them get that big team fight going. EG are just really abusing their maneuverability and doing a great job of it. Well, they still haven't got a Rax. That's the big thing here. Nature's Prophet going to try and maybe get the top. They get the oh, there's the blink. Black hole long DD. He catches three. There's no way to disrupt it. Flame Break comes in too late. Tong Fu's already done the damage. Life Stealer drops. Demon going to try to last you up. How? But I don't think he's got enough damage to deal with him. And how? Just going to turn it around. Pops the ultimate. Takes out Malk as well. And... Tong Fu, they may have held. The problem is this top racks has gone down. HYH, we're going to get both the melee and the range barracks. Oh, how is so low. The Prophet could TP onto this. I'm not sure why he's not. HYHY, you've been so ballsy all game, but you choose this moment to play it safe. Well, like you said, he got racks and Demon is keeping them back. Tong Fu really want to be immediately pushing and trying to get some racks back of their own, but gods, I really don't think they can. They didn't kill the Prophet. Yeah, HYH right now he's considering TPing, and now he's going to TP bottom, and yeah, Nature's Prophet, this is, I think, EG have figured out how to take this game with this item lead, with this farm lead, they've had a, a solid sort of 7 to 8k lead, gold lead, all game long, but have just been losing most of the fight, suddenly it's like, oh, it's kind of clicked, they've just got to use split push, apply pressure all over the make and map, and just punish every little mistake Tong Fu's making with pickoffs using this bat rider. And now that you've lost the lane of Rex top, someone constantly has to be defending that, and they're unprotected, which means they are very vulnerable to smoke ganks, to the bat bomb, to the profit bomb, to just, you know, all this mobility. Having this lane of Rex down, it's not only that you're up against profit and he's always going to be pushing the lane in with his ult, it's also that it just creates more territory where you're not protected from the ganks, from the, the spread your lineup out kind of playstyle that EG are running. Tong Fu, they know this Aegis is important. They're, and also, they're just a bit afraid to be towards that top side of the map. They are playing in the dark. And that's the other downside of this position. It's going to be hard to keep any kind of vision up. And without it, I don't know if they can deal with EG. Yeah, EG with the top Raxes. They can just keep on split pushing, keep on pressuring out the lanes. And EG, even though on the Radiant side, will be probably looking in a better position to take this next Roshan with Aegis oh, plus Cheese. And if EG get that, then... Tong Fu in all sorts of trouble. Tong Fu, though, the big thing is that Hao has got his butterfly, got his home of the Dominator. He's getting more and more farm. Wants to start maybe building a Crystallis, a Daedalus. Some, he just needs more damage. That's the only way they can maybe fight this back. They have to get the kills fast, and it's going to come from just getting pure right-click damage on this Shadow thing. Yeah, he's got to get huge, and along with that, they really need another great Black Hole, a great Roar initiation. Yep. The gem is up on Veronica. This is going to help them quite a bit, and... You know, it does make it a bit harder for EG to find those pickoffs, which is, that's how Tong Fu lose this game without even having a chance. They die with, you know, basically a, whim a whimper instead of a bang, is if they get picked off, but if they don't, if they have the orderly team fight, at worst it can go either way, and at best, maybe they just run away with it. Tong Fu definitely not out of this game yet, but it is, it is going to come down to perfect execution. Their lineup a lot more difficult to execute at this stage in the game than EG's. The bat bomb yeah, is ready, EG. by the way. Oh, here we go. It's going to be on Demon. Can he find how? How's got no agent? It's actually going to be the counter initiation. Demon's being called out. Hex up as well. So you're going to tr go out right into an ice path, and that is exactly how Tong Fu wanted to engage. It's not made, going to be enough, mate, with Demon buying back, and EG are going to find themselves in a position where they're going to try sneak another Rax at bottom lane. HYHY is going for the back door. Oh no, Tong Fu just being spread too thin. Oh, you cheeky little bugger. HYHY, you devil, you genius. This looks great. Long ED gets caught. He's X'd up. Can't stand against this life zero. He'll die. It comes Demon. The buybacks, the boots of travel. It was enough. Tong Fu are falling apart. Gods, they are collapsing. Four heroes dead. Unstoppable Munchkin. HYHY, he had a hiccup in the, main, the mid game. But boy, did he storm back in this Shadow Blade Prophet, this double Midas, this. Shadow of the Bat play from EG, it's enough. They take game number one, and they do it in a crowd-pleaser kind of fashion. 
They do it with style. I mean, the, the life stealer pick with both the Bat Rider as well as the Nature's Prophet. Such great synergy between these heroes, and well, it really worked out for EG. They had that strong early start. They, as you say, hiccups in the mid game, not just from HYHY, HY, especially from Demon. A few bad decisions from him, but overall, it was Demon who gave EG this incredible early game advantage. He played, he played fantastic for the most part, and I think that really sums up EG. Some amazing moments of individual skill, but it comes with a price when they go for these flashy plays. They'll make some mistakes, some bad judgments, all, but for the most part, it was. It was Demon winning this game for EG. Uh, I'm not I'm not ready to make a prediction about the series, guys, but I am ready to call it that Bat Rider is gonna be bad next game. No way I see him getting through. If they if they if he does, they're gonna have to find a much better laning matchup. Demon just had an easy time of it versus the bat versus the Beastmaster. Prophet dominated the mid lane versus Shadowfiend in the early game, and the tri lane did enough. EG take game number one in spectacular fashion, but ladies and gentlemen, this is a best out of three, and Tongfu, a team that have lost game odds before and bounced back to take the series, so don't count them out yet. Tongfu could definitely take the series, but EG looking strong after game one. Guys, stay tuned. Game two, coming up soon after this.